Good morning. My name is Melinda Stevens. As provost of Geneva College, I'm pleased to welcome you to Geneva's 2020 virtual commencement ceremony. Graduates, I offer you my congratulations. I desperately hoped that I would be able to extend that, those congratulations in person. Sadly, the situation remains such that we are unable to gather here on campus. But we continue to hope and pray that we can offer you a very real, real welcome back at a future homecoming or alumni event. We cherish the time that you have spent with us on campus, and we hope and pray that your experience at Geneva has inspired you in some way to live out your lives in all arenas, including your work in the presence of God. We already miss you, but we're so pleased to celebrate once more with you today. I'd like to take a moment to greet the parents and family members joining us today. You have invested significant resources in the college and entrusted your loved ones to us for the last four or so years. Thank you for that demonstration of faith in Geneva. At this time, I'd like to open our ceremony with prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you today. We ask for this blessing on this event. We thank you for the good work of the students that have led them to this point. We thank you for their success. We praise you for the abilities and the gifts that you have given them that have allowed them to succeed. We ask that you would be with those that are seeking employment, those have, who have already achieved employment, and we just ask that you would be with them as they transition in this period of, uh, at this period of time. We thank you for their ability to serve God wherever they are. We thank you for their faithful and fruitful service. We ask that the graduates would continue to be able to serve with grace. They would continue to pursue godly wisdom. They would continue to live out the other core values of the college even after they've left. We ask all these things in your name. Amen. It is my privilege to introduce our commencement speaker today, Dr. Calvin Traup, the 20th president of Geneva College. After graduating from Geneva in 1983, Dr. Traup worked as a trend analyst for the Nasbit Group, owned by John Nasbit, author of Megatrends, congressional staff aide to Representative Duncan Hunter, and an executive for the National Association of Life Underwriters in Washington, DC. In 1989, Dr. Traup returned to academia earning a master's degree and a PhD in speech communication from the Pennsylvania State University. He served on the faculties of Penn State University Park and Indiana University in Bloomington, Indiana, before moving to the Department of Communication and Rhetorical Studies at Duquesne University in Pittsburgh, where he directed the university's nationally ranked rhetoric PhD program. Dr. Trapp's scholarly interest is the rhetoric and philosophy of St. Augustine and the rhetoric of technology. His books include Temporality, Eternity and Wisdom, The Rhetoric of St. Augustine's Confessions, and Augustine for the Philosophers, The Ret Rhetoric of Hippo, The Confessions. Dr. Traup has edited the Journal of Communication and Religion and is a past president of the Religious Communication Association. Before his presidency, Dr. Traup served on the Geneva College Board of Corporators and Board of Trustees leading a number of college and board committees. Dr. Trapp and his wife Amy have four daughters, four sons-in-law, three granddaughters, and one grandson. They are members of Grace Reformed Presbyterian Church in Gitsonia, Pennsylvania, where Dr. Trapp serves as an elder. Please welcome Dr. Trapp to the podium. What a privilege it is to be with you today. Even though it's virtual, Today is a pivotal day in your life. Commencement is a very important ceremony. And at Geneva College, we think of commencement as a commissioning ceremony. It's a sending service that you are moving into a new season of life from all of the work that you accomplished here. But you'll remember with me for a minute that it's almost exactly four years since we first met together with you as the class of 2020. And we'll remember a specific thing at the end about that time. But a lot has happened. There's a lot of water that's gone over the dam 
uh, since uh, four years ago. And what I'd like to give you an opportunity to do is think about things that you might want or need to confess. As college students, there are certain kinds of things that we might want to confess, um, and you're welcome to do that now with your family and friends as they're gathered with you and as you're thinking about your Geneva years. That's a good kind of thing to do around a commencement ceremony. There are some of these confessions that you might think, yeah, I think that'll wait a little bit. Um, I have that experience sometimes. I get together with alums and I hear their confessions of things that they did as students. Um, one of them's kind of legendary. Uh, we, we, most of us have heard the legend of the cow in the bell tower of Old Maine. And this is a fact. It's actually happened, but the stories about it are more legendary. For instance, there's disagreement, uh, not about whether the cow actually got into the bell tower, but how it got out. Uh, and so... There's one version that says uh, cows can't go downstairs backwards, and therefore they had to actually slaughter the cow in the bell tower. That is not true. That did not happen. Uh, people that were involved uh, have indicated and in writing that, in fact, the cow did go up and the cow was able to come back down. In some legends, the cow is still walking around up there in the bell tower somewhere, but too many people have signed the walls going up to the bell tower for that to be the case. So we know the cow's not there now, and we have reason to believe the cow got down. So that's, these are the kinds of things that college students do, and I love college students. I love you as students, and I'm glad that you've been with us. Um, and so as you can tell, I'm missing you. But, but then there, there's another kind of confession of when I was a student, just a freshman, a lowly freshman at Geneva College, some of the seniors went in during their senior week and took all of the chairs off of the uh, floor in SE22, reversed them and screwed them down, ha uh, turned backwards. And uh, they thought they got away with it. That actually did not happen. And they had conversations with the deans and the president and had the opportunity to turn those chairs back around, uh, among other things. Um, a, a third kind of confession might seem a little extreme to you, but I was meeting with a, 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 an alum of the college and and before we even could sort of say hello, he said, Dr. Trout, I need to confess to you. He said, I was just a terrible problem for the president uh, when I was at Geneva College and for the deans, and they're all past now, and so I'm going to talk to you for the sake of the college and for the sake of these people. I said, okay, well, what happened? He said, well, without telling anyone, uh, spring break in the early 1960s, very early 1960s, uh, a group of friends and I decided that there was something that we wanted to explore. So we drove to Florida, went to Miami, we got on a plane and flew to Havana, Cuba, spent one night in a hotel there for about $2, uh, enjoyed ourselves. There was a lot of hubbub going on, but we had a good night. And, and then we flew back to Miami only to realize that what was going on was a revolution on Cuba. And then we came back, and we didn't feel like we needed to tell anyone about that, but I'm telling you now that among the other things that I did that I probably shouldn't have done when I was at Geneva College, that's one of them. Now, I can tell you these things because you're graduating. I don't want to give you ideas uh, for what you might have done while you were here. You probably came up with some of your own ideas about pranks and other things. But it's one of the reasons these things happen to us when we're at Geneva. It's one of the reasons I love Geneva College students. I love not the pranks, but I love what the Lord does in our lives and how we make mistakes and recover and overcome things. And so uh, I want you to know that it pains me that we have not been able to say goodbye. You had to leave campus and we didn't even get to say goodbye. And that creates an unfulfilled longing for us. We had such a great desire to have an in-person, face-to-face graduation. That has not worked out. And so I want to officially say farewell and mean it, that you would fare well as you proceed into your next season of life from the great work that you've accomplished at Geneva College. It's not just sad 
but to not be able to say goodbye to people that we love and care for is a gripping moment for us. And it's happened to me a number of times in my life. Uh, and it's never pleasant. But we are here and we do have a lot to celebrate. Uh, and as a commissioning ceremony, uh, I have a word for you today. Um, and so I have a word in three parts. Uh, first, I have a word of encouragement for you today. I have a word of remembrance, and then I have a word of guidance. So let's move first into the word of encouragement. As we said, we didn't get to say goodbye. We're in very difficult, challenging times. There's a lot of chaos and confusion in our world today. Nobody knows exactly what's going to happen next. And so uh, I want to read a passage of scripture that I hope will be encouraging to you uh, as we think about being Geneva people, pro Christo at Patria. This passage is from the book of Matthew and chapter 7. It's a very familiar uh, passage. You'll recognize it um, right away. And it's Matthew 7, 24 and 25. This is God's word. And he says to us, Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house. But it did not fall, because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat against that house. And it fell, and great was the fall. I just want to observe a couple of encouraging things from this for us in our world today. First, Christ is deeply attentive to his word and to how we respond to it. And at Geneva College, the prime textbook is the Bible, and the prime teacher is Jesus. And so we have encouraged you to listen to him and to do what he says. And when we do that, we become people who are building on the rock. The second thing that I want you to think about is the importance of both, both hearing and doing what Jesus says. And as Geneva people, and as Geneva now alumni, it's very important for us at a time like this to know that when we look to Christ and his word, we are standing on rock, on solid ground. This is important because although I learned this and was one of my favorite Bible stories, um, we had songs with motions that we learned. And this is an important early Bible story. For those of us who are more mature, like you are becoming, this is a valuable lesson because the same storm hits both houses. You know, the Lord does not exempt us from the troubles and the difficulties that we're facing. We're facing those all together. But in the world, people are full of anxiety and distress especially when the only place they have to look is beside them and next to them and to human leadership, um, as, as flawed as that is, and to uh, the inability of us to come up with answers as quickly as we would like to. But when we look to Christ, we look to someone whose word is absolutely true and reliable and who has been faithful in every generation, and will be faithful in every generation. This is the rock upon whom we can build. And that has to be encouragement, an encouragement to us in one of the most difficult moments in our history together. And so I want you to be encouraged because we are in the midst of a storm and we have a rock upon which we can stand and withstand this storm, even as it affects us in very practical ways. 
The second word I have for you is a word of remembrance. And I want to encourage you to remember that Geneva is in your heart. Now, this is a reality, not a sentiment. This is a reality, not nostalgia. And you may not feel that today. You might not feel Geneva as being part of your heart today. But it will become that for you. Let me explain. I'm an older alum. When I graduated from Geneva College, I was not thinking about Geneva College. I was thinking about the next thing. Yes, I was grateful. I was grateful. I said thank you to my professors. I said thank you to the staff that had supported and helped me. But my mindset was on the next thing. My mindset was on the job that the Lord had called me to and on the things that I anticipated doing. And it was a wonderful time, as I trust it will be for you and is for you today. But Geneva College has done things that will remain with you and that we know from generation after generation of Geneva students will grow in you and in your heart. And you don't need to recognize them exactly today. But what I want you to think about is what is the precious metal that you've been given, that you have earned, that you have seen forged in you, in your heart and mind while you've been at Geneva College. And recognize that that can give you a glimpse into the richness and depth of what a Geneva education does for us as graduates of Geneva College. I just want to remind you, because maybe the best summary of this is in the core values that we share. So we begin with an understanding that Christ is king. So with Christ as king and under the scripture, we serve others with grace. We serve with grace. Why? Because the Lord Jesus Christ came to serve, not to be served. It's pretty straightforward. Geneva people are inclined to service. Second, we pursue godly wisdom. We pursue godly wisdom. Why? Because in Christ are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And because we need wisdom, we are praying for wisdom every day, aren't we? We need wisdom to help us discern what we should do next. And we want that wisdom to be grounded on this rock that we have discussed. We want to foster academic strength. One of the things that means is we need to keep reading. But we need to keep reading, not to say we've read, but to continue to grow, to continue to develop. Many of you, a number are going to graduate school right now. And that's such a good thing. Some of you may do graduate school in the future. Some of you won't need to. That's fine. But we all need to learn and grow from where we are. So fostering academic strength means being attentive to continuing teachers that come into our lives, to continuing opportunities to learn. We engage culture faithfully. Well, one of the main things about engaging culture is recognizing that engaging culture is more than engaging pop culture. It's more than engaging media culture. In fact, at Geneva, I hope that you have learned that culture is something that human beings actually do. It's not something we watch. So it's much more about the everyday things of life, about eating together and living together and working together and building things together and walking through things together, that this is the nature of culture in the human experience and that every human culture does this in unique and beautiful uh, ways that we can engage. So we want to engage culture faithfully to be in the world, but not to be of the world and to remember to whom we belong. We also want to inspire vibrant hospitality. And uh, we want to invite you back for Orem's Donuts whenever you can come. Uh, but there's more to hospitality than a delicious Orem's Donut. Um, their hospitality has to do with a heart, an open heart towards others. To inspire that, to inspire not only to be generous, 
but to inspire generosity in others towards one another, to have a charitable mindset towards other human beings, and to invite people in and welcome them into our lives. It doesn't, you don't have to have a house to be hospitable. There are many ways to do it. It's a state of mind and heart and an inclination towards others. And then finally, we want to honor one another. And in this, we see over and over again that we are called to count others as more significant than ourselves, to look to their interests, not to our own interests, to, to seek the good of others, not our own good, and to outdo one another in showing honor. That our inclination is to build up others in whatever role we're in, in whatever place we're in, in whatever relationship we're in, that we're called to build others up. I also want to give you a word of guidance. And this is the charge. This is the charge. You have been given sound learning at Geneva College. You can tell already some of the things that are so clearly grounded on the rock of Jesus Christ that you can build on that you can build a house that includes your greatest desires, that includes your greatest gifts and your abilities, some of which have been cultivated here at Geneva College. And to remember from whom you learned it, the qualities of the people who have been our teachers at Geneva College. But how do you build from this? And that's what I want to challenge you to do, is to build from the work that you've done at Geneva College, to put it to use every day. Well, how do you put yourself in position to do that? And, and here comes the guidance from the old guy, okay? Number one, find a home church. Find a body of Christian believers who loves Jesus Christ and loves his word above all else and who will invite you into loving Christ more deeply and to loving your neighbor as yourself. You have to deliberately go out and look for that. You will not be invited by the world to do that. And so you need to make that a purpose, if you have not already done so, a purpose of the next season of your life. Second thing is that not only do you need to find a place to go to church, but you need to engage in the life of the church, in the life of your neighborhood, in the life of your community. Don't wait. Don't put it off until your 30s. Start to be engaged in the ways that you can in your church, with your neighbors, in your community. The third thing I want to encourage you to do is to embrace maturity. The world is going to tell you it will use words like adulting. It will say it's fearful. That is not what we tried to encourage you to learn here at Geneva College. Instead, we encourage you to embrace maturity by walking into the next season of life to learn and grow and build as a responsible person before the Lord and as a responsive person to the Lord as you're gaining maturity every day. All of us should be seeking greater maturity. There's no end point. One of the ways you do that is by taking on burdens. I'm not talking about keeping yourself busy. I'm talking about listening to the Lord as opportunities come to you and being willing to accept and take on burdens that are meaningful, meaningful burdens through which you can build up others and help the world in your community and in your place to grow. And so taking on burdens is one of the things we're called to do in the scriptures as younger people. Finally, I want to encourage you to purpose to build a household that welcomes others. 
This is not code for getting married. That's an important thing. But even the Proverbs say it's kind of unsearchable to know how people actually get together. And I'm not going to give you any advice about that. But what's really clear is that as you move out of college into the next season of life, as you become a responsible adult, as you seek maturity, part of that is purposing to build a household that is ready to engage people and welcome them in. And, uh, and, and whether that is neighbors or coworkers or friends or a spouse or children, that's up to the Lord. And you'll figure that out. But the mindset and the assumption that we're all responsible as Christian people to build a household and that we have the resources to do that, that you have the resources to start down that path as it is an important part of the call and claim of Christ on all of our lives. Finally, I want to remind you of that first day we met together with you as a class in Matheny Fieldhouse without physical distancing or masks or any of the things that we're having to do this year. And I want to remind you of one thing that we talked about. I told you that day that the call and the claim of the gospel, the call of the gospel is not be good. The call of the gospel is follow Jesus. As college students, none of us could be good all the time. And if you were a student that was good all the time, don't tell the rest of us. We made mistakes, we goofed up, we did some things wrong, that we maybe knew were wrong when we were doing them. We had to repent and confess of those things and move on. But the, in the gospel, we have a Savior who is a rock, who forgives us of our sins, who invites us to repent and be restored to Him, and who is also the great teacher about everything. And so I want to encourage you as a Geneva alum to hear his still, small voice. At Geneva, the most important textbook is the Bible, and the most important teacher is Jesus. And he tells us so this way, in these moments. Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. What a blessing to have such a teacher from whom we never need to graduate. Pro Christo et Patria, thank you for all of the contributions you've made and all that you've done while you've been with us. May the Lord bless you in your next season of life. It is now my privilege to introduce the Life G Award winners for 2020. Their biographies are written up in your commencement program, and so I'm not going to rehearse for you all of those uh, amazing details of their lives. Instead, I'd like to talk personally about each one a little bit, but before I do, I want you to note that to be awarded the Life G by Geneva College means that we are saying that these people have followed Christ through their lives in a way that we would encourage you to follow as well. It's an interesting thing when you look over Life G Award winners. They have what I would refer to as unique commonalities. No people are exactly the same, but the path of Christ is a knowable path that we can all follow together. And so there are wonderful distinctions between each of these award winners and also wonderful commonalities. The first person I would like to introduce to you is one of my teachers at Geneva, Dr. Ken Hartman. 
For those of you that are athletes, uh, especially those of you who have played on the men's or women's soccer team, there are many ways in which, in hindsight, without Dr. Hartman, we would not have the high-quality soccer programs that we enjoy at Geneva College today. I've seen many of you play. I started seeing Geneva College soccer with Ken Hartman on the sideline, and the sideline was at 33rd Street Field, and Geneva soccer was a club. And he was there the first four years as that club soccer team was forged, which has now become our D3 soccer program, men's and women's. And so this is just one illustration of the kinds of things that Dr. Hartman has done. I also had him in a chemistry class without labs. Many of you have heard me say, I don't do math, I do arithmetic. And Dr. Hartman and I worked through that class in SE22, and we both came out of it unscathed. Um, little did I know what a traditional pattern Dr. Hartman had followed. He was a Geneva alum from 1963, and then happened to do his PhD at a place called Penn. Um, these are courses that Geneva students take that you can follow, that I was able to follow because of the quality of the teachers at Geneva and their willingness to do all kinds of things to make Geneva a stronger place. You can see the many things that uh, Dr. Hartman has done before and since, uh, but what I want you to understand is this simple thing about every Life G Award winner. His work has been here in Beaver County. He has publicly honored Christ in his life. He has built up Christ Church, served Geneva College faithfully, engaged his community fruitfully. And Geneva College is honored to count Dr. Ken Hartman among our esteemed recipients of the Life G Award. We are deeply grateful for his life of faithful service, Pro Christo et Patria. Thank you, Dr. Hartman. Our second Life G Award winner is Mrs. Roberta McFarland. It's good on a day like this to think about what have we learned from our mothers? And if we're blessed the way that Mrs. Traup and I have been blessed, we have many mothers, including our own. Mrs. McFarland is one of those people. She, we often think of Proverbs 31 women. We ought to think of Titus 2 women as well. And Mrs. Roberta McFarland has given her life in many ways to showing us how things ought to be done. Many of you have been in our home for a meal and we're looking forward to having more students into our home as you've been there. But we didn't come up with that idea. That was something that we learned in part from Mrs. McFarland. When she was the first lady of Geneva College, her home was an open home of Christian hospitality that welcomed students and faculty and staff into the president's residence to enjoy wonderful food and wonderful fellowship. She has shown us how it's done. She has so many accomplishments as a Christian woman, and we're so thankful for her personal and professional accomplishments, but we're especially thankful for the many investments that she has made in Geneva College over many years. Mrs. Roberta McFarland is a Life G Award winner. Why? Because her work has been across the globe. She has publicly honored Christ in her life. She has built up Christ Church, served Geneva College faithfully, and engaged her com community fruitfully. And Geneva College is honored to count Mrs. Roberta McFarland among our esteemed recipients of the Life G Award. 
We are deeply grateful for your life of faithful service. Pro Christo et Patria. Thank you, Mrs. McFarland. Through the generosity of alumni and friends, Geneva is able to award a number of prizes to students who have attained distinction and have done outstanding work in various fields. A description of these prizes and awards, along with the list of the recipients, appears in the program. We want to recognize several groups of graduates at this time. First, a number of our students are graduating cum laude with honor. They have attained a cumulative grade point average of at least 3.4. These students have received their white honors course. Our next group is graduating magna cum laude with high honor. They have achieved a cumulative grade point average of at least 3.6 and have received a mixed gold and white honors cord. The next group is graduating summa cum laude with highest honor. They have achieved a cumulative grade point average of 3.8 or higher. These students have received a gold honors cord. Alpha Chi members have received a medallion. Alpha Chi is a general honor society that admits students from all academic disciplines. Membership is limited to the top 10% of an institution's juniors and seniors. Invitation to membership comes by vote of the college faculty. Finally, it is a great honor to recognize the valedictorians of the class of 2020. These students have achieved the highest grade average, a perfect 4.0 in this graduating class. The award is limited to students who have completed the majority of their work during a four-year period without any repeated courses. This year, there are three students who meet this criteria. I will read their names in order to recognize them. Fred Anthony Angel Jr. Sarah Noel Hennig. Ariadne F. Lewis. Jamie Swank, Dean of Student Development, and Dr. Jeff Cole, Director of Crossroads and Professor of History, are about to read the names of each 2020 graduate. Together, they represent the fact that Geneva's educational mission takes place both in and out of the classroom. Mr. President, we are pleased to present the class of 2020. We are now at the moment of truth, the pivotal point in every commencement exercise. So in case you missed it, I'm about to repeat the formula the official declaration that makes you a graduate of Geneva College as of May 16, 2020. As we have noted previously, this declaration takes effect once you have fully met all the graduation requirements and obligations. By vote of the Geneva College Board of Trustees and by the authority granted by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, Geneva College hereby confers their designated degrees on each student certified by the registrar to have successfully completed all graduation requirements with all the rights and privileges that pertain thereunto. Congratulations on becoming an alum of Geneva College. Timothy Andrew Eukers. Daniel Joseph Wood. Rachel Marie Westner. Jessica Ann Wilson. Andrew Vladislav Wilson. Noah Christopher Wilkinson. Jamie Patricia Wilhelm. Jared James Wixon. Rachel Michelle Western. Jordan R. West. Timothy Jean Weir. Isabella Antoinette Louis Wineland. Alan Elliot Weed. Brett M. Webb. 
Grace Audrey Anna Weaver. Elijah John Watkins. Olivia Rochelle Warner. Rachel Corinne Ward. Jushwin Wang. Alexander Isaiah Walker. Amanda Marie Walker. Griffin Colvard Waldhauser. Taylor A. Volby. Monica Joy Valencia. Cole K. Urban. David Micah Ulmer. Andrew T. Tyson. Joshua David Tigert. Caitlin Sandra Trimble. Olivia Tranovich. Kinsey Townsend. Alec D. Tesnar. Lindsay Hoke Tedro. Brandon Lee Tedro. Kyle J. Taylor. Dylan W. Taggart. Demetrius Aspen Sai. Ashley C. Swift. Lydia Rachel Swartzbach. Destiny Marie Story. Emily Rose Steffens. Eden Elizabeth Smith. Coleman Arthur Smith. Rebecca Joyce Smith. Grace Gia Skarzynski. Jennifer Alice Simmons. Miley O'Hara Sikorsky. Miranda Grace Shemansky. Shania Cherie Shustock. Joshua James Shoup. Caitlin Rose Shoemaker. Michael Schemer. Jared Jacob Sheehan. William Roosevelt Shaw. Noel Marie Scolieri. Samuel Benjamin Schreg. Rhea Ann Schlachter. Chet Scarpa. Savannah Sogier. Nina Ashley Santana. Torin Patrick Salas. Nicholas Paul Russin. Colton T. Ruggles. Lydia Roth. Noah Wilson Ross. Jared Eli Rosenberger. Sydney Nicole Rivera. Rebecca Catherine Renow. Jacob Ryan Riddle. Kevin A. Rettinger. Catherine Ritzma. Micah Timothy Reese. Jason David Reese. John Gabriel Rossetti. Sarah I. Raspberry. Josue Martin Ramirez. Brandon M. Racine. Jacob Allen Poremski. Michael Patrick Polod. Michael Richard Pinchotti. John MacArthur Pillsbury. Jacob Charles Pilarchik. Andrew Robert Perini. Patrick Scott Pollack. Matthew Stephen Paul. Bethany 
Robin Patton. Matthew Allen Partridge. Alexander Parker. Nathaniel Paget. Caleb Michael Orvis. Carly Marguerite Orr. Laura and Marie O'Neill. David Earl Oliver. Brandon Matthew Knoll. Alex Robert Nicholson. Marissa Faye Nicholas. Jana Lynn Newberry. Brandon Paul Nelson. Marissa Marie Myers. Abigail Lynn Murphy. Natalia Marie Muoyo. Matthew William Munford. Julio Alberto Mosquera. Ethan Sean Moose. Isaac James Moore. Lois Elise Montgomery. Stefano N. Monteleone. James Charles Minconi. Lincoln James Mamidis. Aubrey Milroy Weir. Kariana J. Milling. Abigail Grace Mahalik. Henry David Meese. Naomi Yvette McIntyre. Ryan Scott McCracken. Linda Grace McCracken. Quinn J. Paul McCracken. Aaron Elise McLean. Madison Lee McBride. Miranda F. Mazza. Taylor Lynn Marshall. Nicholas David Morris. Jenna Christine Marsis. Cody Allen Marchluski. David M. Mahoney. Sarah Ruth Mack. Rebecca Adina Lungu. April L. Lude. Gina Marie Luciana. Justin William Lawfrey. Rebecca Marie Locke. Aubrey Anna Livingood. Danielle Emma Lincoln. Shu Pei Lin. Ariadne Faye Lewis. Rachel Lynn Letterman. Colton James Larry. Wesley Aaron Larry. Samantha Paige Lally. Evan Joseph Kovarik. Rachel Darlene Kuntz. Sarah Elizabeth Klingensmith. Hershey S. Kirkwood. Jordan Lee King. Erica Lynn Kaufman. Lucas Raymond Kadlesic. Abigail E. Julian. Victoria Michelle Johnson. Sherway Jia. Luke Norman Jedry. Tegan Lynette Jacobson. Levi River Isaac. Nicholas Daniel Irino. Nathaniel Stephen Hall. Sarah Elizabeth Huggins. Adam Reed Honey. Emily Hoffman. 
David Keyes Hoffman, Alexander Richard Hoffman, Emily Kate Hoffman, Victoria Nicole Hull, Megan Elizabeth Hernizen, Brady Matthew Higginbottom, Sydney Marie Hessem. Noel A. Henry. Sarah Henny. Stephen Nathaniel Harmon. Paige Marie Harlan. Connor Curtis Hammond. Jason Robert Halt. Adam Jeffrey Hall. Gregory Aaron Grover. Eli Jeffrey Grove. Alexander Paul Walter Gressinger. Joshua Stephen Grant. Samantha Claire Govan. Jenna Marie Golnick. Joshua Thomas Gilliland. Holly Rita Grofair. Allison Marie Gerwig. Noah Franklin Gatton. Jesse Edward Garcia. Jeremy Gann. Cooper Richard French. Brianna Marie Frasher. Joshua Michael Fournier. Vanessa Lee Foltz. Thomas J. Fiorini. Adam Brady Fellenbaum. Emily Ruth Etheridge. Sarah Patricia Ernie. Corey Clayton Erford. Joshua Michael Echo. Madeline Grace Echo. Grace Suzanne Edmonds. Jake Austin Dykes. Nicholas Dante Ducey. Julia Marie Duncan. Alex Timothy Duhon. Josiah William Drybelbus. Hannah E. Dre. Elizabeth Kayla Donaldson. Carly Joe Dolgos. Millicent Margaret Oldale Doffelmeyer. Nicholas Daniel Dietry. David William Dill. Carrie E. Deal. Annie Laurie Dawson. Noah Michael Damazo. Micah George Dagnall. Chelsea Grace Curry. Abigail Audine Crumrine. Justine Lynette Crawford. Amanda Brooke Cottage. Casey L. Costell. Devin Marcus Cortez. Justin Thomas Conrad. Isabella N. Condi. Amir A. Cobbs. Joshua Paul Coatsworth. James Erskine Coates. Julia C. Clement. Jesse Ramon Claudio. Jason Adam Clark. Logan Thomas Clark. Yu Xian Chow. Tobias Matthew Chan. Francesco Filomino Santofanti. 
Brittany Marie Seeger. Paige Elizabeth Seeger. Tyler Dale Can. Coulter Matthias Cagle. Kennedy Burgreen. Lauren Noel Brubaker. Nicholas Weatherly Brown. Tamara Suzanne Brown. Joshua Ryan Brockmeyer. Jacob Calvin Broadwick. Hank Richard Bradish. Zachary Hunter Bowser. Honore Victoria Basse. Kenton Andrew Belmont. Matthew Robert Bine. Joshua David Baptiste. Abigail Elaine Bankus. Caleb Dwayne Armentrout. Levi James Armentrout. Fred Anthony Angel. Patrick John Anderson. Corinne Danae Alderfer. Victoria Akia. Amelia Dorothy Adams. Matthew Abdi. Eric Wade Abbott. Please pray with me as we close. Our loving Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for these students who have completed their work at Geneva College. Thank you, Lord, for their precious lives. Thank you for their work and for the growth that you've accomplished in them at Geneva. Oh, Lord, we pray that you would cause them to look to you, to glorify your name, O Lord. We pray that you would give them ears to hear and that you would help them to listen, that they might hear your voice and know you and follow you into the next season of their lives. We pray, Lord, that you will bless them as they move and as they grow into what you have for them next. Lord, let them build and make their calling clear to them as you guide them along your way. I pray that you will bless their going out and their coming in and that you would confirm the work of their hands, O Lord. Please hear God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. I wanted to take one last minute with you because there's something I need to tell you that other people on campus don't know yet, and it has to do with you specifically. This is for all of our graduates of 2020, our traditional undergraduate program, our graduate program, online, classroom, everyone. And I want you to know that we're probably gonna to have to move the clock. And I wanna explain why. We're gonna to have to move the clock because when we had to decide to move to virtual commencement, that was very difficult for us. It was very difficult for me. And as we discussed it, we thought we need to do something to pay tribute to the class of 2020. 
We thought of a number of different ideas, but as we thought, we decided we needed to do something that was really going to be a permanent reminder and tribute to you. Because as we've said over and over again, this is a 100-year event. We trust that this kind of thing will not become a regular happening at Geneva College. And you've sacrificed tremendously and worked very hard to finish well in this year of 2020. And so I can't, I don't know all the details. I can't provide all the details, but I want you to think about the um, gazebo close to Old Main. And then I want you to think about that in a larger size, because what we're going to do is we're going to completely renovate this major intersection on campus. And we're gonna put a kind of gazebo or pavilion that will be handcrafted by Geneva Physical Plant, designed by Physical Plant with the engineering department and built right here in the center of campus. And prominently displayed on it will be a tribute to the class of 2020. We never want to forget what you sacrificed and the challenges that you've overcome in finishing this year. So when you come back to campus, you will be both remember and be remembered every time you come. I can tell you that because we're doing this in-house, it's gonna be high quality. And we're also going to have to wait to do it until physical plant and the others on campus that will be involved can catch up with the COVID-19 backlog that we're doing. So I can't tell you a date when it's finished, but it's funded and it's already established that we're going to do this. And I wanted you to know how grateful we are for the sacrifices that you've made and how much we're looking forward to seeing the complete renovation of this special part of campus as a tribute to you. Thank you from Geneva College.